in lesson one, we're going to download the sample database file for today's lessons from my website. It's the same database we built in the last class in case you don't still have a copy. We'll discuss the security warning that Access displays whenever you open a database. We'll learn about the Enable Content button and when you should be careful about clicking on it. I'll show you how to set up your own trusted folder so you can open databases without having to deal with that security warning. And we'll go through a quick review of the database we built in Level 1. Let's begin today by downloading the sample database that we built in Level 1 from my website at accesslearningzone.com slash databases. Now, if you didn't take Level 1, don't worry, that's okay. It's a free download. If you don't have access to the web right now, again, don't worry. It's a very simple database to build. I'll walk you through what we did in the last class real quick. Okay, so I'll point my trusty web browser over to accesslearningzone.com slash databases. The student database files page loads up. I'll scroll down a little bit. There's Access 2010. Now we're looking for the Access 2010 Beginner 1 database. That's the way the database was at the end of that class. This page will change in the future, I'm sure, as more and more classes are added. You can see all the 2003 databases are down here. Now some of them are password protected because the more advanced classes have password protected files. I don't want just anybody downloading them. But the beginner classes are all open. So I will right-click on this file and go Save Link As. Now I'm using Google Chrome. Each browser is slightly different. In Chrome, we select Save Link As. Firefox is also Save Link As. Internet Explorer says Save Target As. They're all the same thing. Now, normally most browsers will try to drop the file into a downloads folder. Personally, I never use a downloads folder myself. I like to drop new downloads onto my desktop, so I'll click on desktop. You'll see the file name down here on the bottom says access2010b1.zip. That's a zip file, a compressed archive. I'll click save. When the file is done downloading, you should find it on your desktop. There it is right there. Double click to open it up. Here you can see the contents of the zip file. It looks just like a normal folder in Windows, but we don't want to work with the database file inside the zip file. So we're going to take it, click and drag and drop it right over here on the desktop. That'll uncompress the file and put a copy of it on your desktop. There it is right there. We can double click to open it up. We can also close the zip file and delete the zip file if you want to. We don't need that file anymore. I'll press delete. But now let's go ahead and double click to open up our PC resale customer database, which is the file that we built in level one. And there's my database. Now before we get started, there are a couple things I want to talk about. First, if you're going to keep files like your database file on your desktop, make sure you back up your desktop nightly. A lot of people have backup routines, whether it's a tape drive or an external hard drive and they back up their data or their documents folders and forget to back up their desktop. I leave a lot of files on my desktop, Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, things that I'm only planning on working on for a little while, and I forget sometimes to back those things up. So anything that's important, make sure you back it up on a regular basis. Now normally, most companies have a file server and they worry about backing up all those files. So if you have a file server in your office, Make sure, ask your network guys where you should be saving your documents to. Running access databases over a network can sometimes be slow if your databases are big. But that's sometimes the price to pay to make sure your information is safe and secure. Now, the second thing I want to mention is this security warning. It says some active content has been disabled. Click for more details. What does this mean? Well, Access and Excel and even Microsoft Word can contain macros and visual basic programming code that may contain viruses. If you download a database or even an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document from a website, it's possible that someone else might have put some malicious code in there 
and can do all kinds of crazy, nasty things to your computer. So when you open up a database, all of the things that could possibly contain a virus, like the forms, the reports, the visual basic modules and macros that might be in there, are all disabled. Nothing will work. This is to protect you in case you get a file from someone else that you don't know that gives you some malicious code. Now all you have to do is click on the Enable Content button, and that will activate all those things that were previously disabled. Only click on that Enable Content button if you're sure the database is safe. Now if it's something that you built yourself, or if it's something that you got from me on my website, you'll know it's safe. But be careful if you download any sample database templates from other websites. Now, opening up your own databases over and over again and having to click that Enable Content button can get annoying. The security warning will also stop any startup forms from loading. And eventually, we're going to use startup forms to create a menu interface for our database. So to get around that warning message for your own databases or other databases that you know are safe, you can set up something called a trusted folder. Anything that runs out of this trusted folder will bypass the security warnings. To create a trusted folder, just go anywhere you like. I'll go up to my desktop here, right click, go to new, and then folder. Type in a name for it, trusted, for example. Now in access, go to file, come down to options, Click on the Trust Center option. Come over here to the right and click on Trust Center Settings. Yes, this is kind of buried. Now click on Trusted Locations. Now here you'll see a list of trusted locations. The one that's set up for me already is where the Access Wizard database is loaded out of. We can add our own locations to this list. Come down here to the bottom, you can click on Add New Location. One thing to note first right here, it says Allow Trusted Locations on My Network, Not Recommended. If you have a network file server, you can set that up as a trusted location, but keep in mind that other people might tamper with your databases. So that's why they say Not Recommended, because other people on the network that have access to it could play with your database. But I'm just going to click on Add New Location right here. The Trusted Location dialog box opens up. I'll click on Browse. I will browse to my trusted folder that's sitting on my desktop. And then I'll click OK. There you can see it says C Users Rick Desktop Trusted. I'll click on the subfolders of this location are also trusted. So anything you might put in a subfolder is also trusted. Then I'll click OK. And now it's added to the trusted locations list. So any databases that I load up out of that trusted folder will automatically bypass the security warning. There's a lot of steps involved, but that's not very difficult to do as long as you know where it's located. Come down to the bottom, click OK again. Click OK one more time. Now we're going to close the database down. Come back to your desktop here, move the database file into the trusted folder. Now open up the trusted folder. There it is. Now if I double click to open up the database file, you can see that it opens up without any security warning. So that's because it's running out of a trusted location. Now if you want to put a shortcut for the database on your desktop, that's fine. I can still open up my trusted folder take my PC resale database here, watch this, right click on it and drag it to your desktop, let it go, and then go to create shortcut here. This is something that I cover in my Windows Basics classes. This creates a shortcut to the database file. The original location of the database file though is still here in the trusted folder, that's just a shortcut. Now if I open it up using the shortcut, it still opens the database from the trusted folder without the security warning. So you can put shortcuts to your databases on your desktop if you want to. Now, taking a quick look at what we built in the last class, we have our customer table. 
This is really the only thing that you need to build if you don't have a copy of the database and can't download it. Really, all you need is this customer table. I'll click on the Design View button here, and you can see what this table consists of. We have a customer ID. That's our auto number. First name, last name, company name, address, city, state, postal code, and country. Those are all text fields. Remember from our first class, I don't like using spaces in my field names. You will see exactly why when we start getting into programming or SQL. We have a few additional fields down here. Email and website, those are hyperlinks. Phone is also a text field. Number of employees and discount rate, those are number fields. Num employees is a long integer. You can see that down here on the bottom, long integer. Discount rate is a double because doubles need to be able to store floating point numbers. Customer sense is a date time. Credit limit, a currency, is active, is a yes, no value. And notes is a memo field. I'll switch back over to data sheet view. You can see I've got 11 sample records in here. Feel free to type in whatever you'd like. It's always better and easier to build a database if you can see data in the objects as you make them. As you work with your queries and forms, it's much easier to build the database if you can see some sample data and the way that it's going to look as you're designing your forms. I'll close the customer table. In the last class, we also built a couple of queries, the customer queue, a simple customer query, the customers from New York queue, which shows only customers from New York, and the customers from Pennsylvania queue, which shows only customers from PA. We also built a simple customer form and a couple of different reports, a basic customer report and some mailing labels. All the rest of these objects you don't need. If you don't have a copy of the database, don't worry about building them. Really all we need for today is the customer T.